Hey there. Today, I wanted to talk about increasing your confidence. I think that this is really important. Um, so it, it really is a huge deal. And I'm going to talk about a few different ways that we can increase confidence and what confidence is and how you can start doing that so that you can start taking on things because that's what confidence really helps us to do is to take on kind of scary things. So first off, what confidence is? Confidence is being secure in your abilities or skills. So basically, as you gain confidence in something, you it's because you're getting better at that thing. So um, babies, right, they get more confident as they become better walkers. And then they, they, you know, same thing. I'm confident that I can tie my shoes, confident that I can make a meal, that tastes pretty good, right? All those different kinds of things. And it, that's come from me perpetuating and perpetually, I should say, getting better at that skill. So um, when I was probably a teenager, um, I, I remember specifically not knowing how to make mac and cheese and I burnt it. So um, there's things like that, right? Like now I can confidently make not just a box of mac and cheese, but all kinds of meals, right? And so my confidence has grown over the years by trying and learning and getting better at those things. So I am secure in my ability and skill of cooking. Um, I'm getting more secure in my skill and ability in coaching, right? In the very beginning, when I started coaching, I was giving it away for free because I was like, I don't know if I'm any good at this. And, and as I've done it more and more, and I've had lots of practice, that skill has grown. Same with me getting onto these, um, these teaching these, <laughs> these topics, right? Um, see, I don't even know if I'm that good. But in the very beginning, I remember the very first video that I ever made, I was super timid, super scared. It was probably 30 seconds tops. And that was all that I could do that required a lot of, um, a lot of courage for me. So how do we gain confidence? How do we gain that um, security in our abilities and skills? So um, to gain this, there's a few things and, and you can do it different ways. And maybe it's a combination of these ways. And I'm going to try and cover all of them. First is you're either going to have to be maybe naive, right? So I think about like my kids learning something and they just think that they can do it. And so there's that naive naivety, naivety, right, of learning th those skills. Like they don't think it's going to be hard and they just jump right in and they don't care if any, if any of those things, right? Like baby learning to walk, they have no expectations. They just think they're going to walk. So there's that part. Um, the other one, I think, so that's one part. <laughs> the next one what might be being courageous and tapping into that skill of being courageous, which I think... Um, is very useful. Um, a lot of times overlooked, we think that courage is a good feeling and it is not. Courage is feeling fear and then doing the thing. So you can have a lot of courage because we think we're not going to be good at this and we're like putting ourselves out there. It feels very vulnerable. And so if we can tap into that feeling of courage, that can really overcome a, that initial part. That's how I did it with videos, right? Like I talked about that very first video I made. It took a ton of courage for me to take the video, post it on Facebook. And I was so scared. All right. And I did it anyways. Okay. And so I feel like I've come a long way in that. And I think that courage is massively necessary sometimes, but there's some other ways that might be a little better. Um, the other one is, uh, I wanted to say there's naturally talented embrace. People are like, there's nobody that's naturally talented. Yes, there are. There are people who are good at things. Um, and so, or they have that background. And so in order to get, you know, they don't need a ton of confidence because they go in and like, they're naturally athletic or something like that. Those things happen. Um, the other one I wanted to talk about was self-confidence. So self-confidence is different than confidence and skill or ability. It's still confidence and a skill or ability, but it's actually confidence that we can, we have the ability to experience, process, or feel any emotion, right? If we can gain that skill of feeling, processing, and experiencing emotions, that will help us to gain more skills. Um, I'll give you an example. So the reason when, when I needed courage to um, create a, my very first Facebook video, 
I needed courage because I was scared of what I was going to feel, right? Like I thought if I put this out there and somebody says something mean, or I don't even know what I was afraid of, that that's really interesting looking back. Like I just knew it was scary to put things out for people to see. That's what I knew. So, um, and talking about coaching and different things like that. So I was scared and I wasn't really thinking about like, what am I going to feel? And so if I had been a little better at this self-confidence knowing, okay, there's a possibility that I might feel humiliation, embarrassment, shame, um, those kinds of things. And then knowing that I could handle those things, that I could experience it, process and feel it, then it wouldn't have been so scary, right? And I wouldn't have needed so much courage. And I'm not saying that courage is bad, right? But it's realizing like there's two parts to that, right? So we can have the, the courage to do the thing, but also realizing that the thing we're actually afraid of is feeling an emotion. And so once we get over that fear of that emotion, because we build the skill of feeling and processing and experiencing emotions, then we don't need so much courage because we're like, oh, worst thing that's going to happen. Somebody's going to say, you look like an idiot and I'm going to be embarrassed. And I'll be like, okay, I can handle that. I can, I can handle embarrassment. Okay. Now I want to take this one step further. and. This is actually part of (laughs) that's made um, my confidence really increase a lot is actually acceptance of, I want to say just um, acceptance of whatever is happening, right? So I just coached somebody the other day and they were talking about they were, um, they were bad at something like they were saying, I'm not, I'm no good at this. Okay. And I was able to get them to a point where we can look at that and say, why is that a problem that we're not good at something? And so once we start to accept and open up to the idea that being bad at something or not being good enough at something is not a problem, right? We may not be fear of people, we might, we may not be afraid of people's judgments, but or how it's going to impact us, but like we still have this underlying operating system saying that being bad at something is bad for whatever reason. So when we open up to that acceptance of the experience that we're having, that can take confidence to like, we can just skyrocket. Okay. So as you know, like you can see me on here, I'm stumbling over my words. I don't know exactly what I'm going to say all the time. I don't edit my videos. I just throw it out there. And the reason why is because I become accepting of where I'm at. I don't take double takes. I don't (laughs) edit things together. I'm just like, well, this is what I'm putting out into the world. And so I have thoughts like, I'm bad at this and that's okay. Or I'm bad at this and that's expected. It's expected by me, right? I'm bad at this and I don't care. Not in the way that like, I don't care what happens, but like, it doesn't make a difference to me if I'm bad at it or if I'm not good at it, right? Like, I'm like, yeah, if somebody were to come up to me and say, your videos suck, I would say, you're right. They're not great. I don't put that much time and effort into them in like that way, I, I put time and effort into this, right? But like, I don't put that much, as much as a lot of people think that I should probably, right? So if they're like, your videos suck, they can be way, way better. Instead of being like, oh my gosh, that's terrible. I would just say, yeah, you're probably right. Like if I hired a video editor and I took different cuts and they put them together and they put the music in there and they did all the things, that would be amazing, right? But I don't do that. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with putting out a first take. I'm okay with people saying things to me. There's so many different ways, right? First of all, I know that I can handle any emotion. Like if they were to say something that was very hurtful, which I've had people in the past say, right? Like I put out an ad one time and people said, I looked like I was abused. <laughs> so, right. And, and it did, it hurt, right? Um, because I don't, for whatever reason, it, that felt bad to me. And so looking back now, I'm like, why? It doesn't matter to me because I would just be like, okay, whatever. 
But now it's one of those things where like, if somebody was to say something hurtful to me, quote unquote hurtful, that I interpreted as hurtful, I would just look at that and be like, yes, I can feel this emotion. I can feel this shame, this embarrassment, this humiliation, this uh, defeated feeling. I can feel this. I can, I can feel all of that. And I, I'm not scared of it. First of all, I know I'm creating it. It's happening in my brain. And then I'm just feeling that vibration in my body. Is it comfortable? Is it enjoyable? No, it's not, but it's not terrible. Like I know it's not going to last forever. Right. And then the second part is just accepting where I'm at on my journey, especially when we're building confidence in something. We have to have this beginner's mindset. Like I am getting better at this every day. Right. And so I just, that's where I take it. Like I'm not good at this and I'm getting better at it. Right. Or maybe in the future, I'll hire somebody out to do my videos. I don't know what the case will be, but I just don't expect more from myself than what I'm giving. If I did, I would never put anything out. And so those two things have allowed me to make more videos, have allowed me to take more action. And in, so, and in doing that, I have created more confidence in my abilities to do this, right? Whether it's misplaced or not, I don't know, but I don't have a fear of putting this out into the world. I'm very confident in my abilities as a coach. I've had a lot of experience, all those types of things, but it starts off, right? There's a couple of things. There's two, maybe you just are good at something for whatever reason, or you just don't know what the expectations are. Those things are great. Those can give you confidence. But the other part that we want to get into is courage, facing our fears self-confidence, knowing that I can process, feel, and experience any emotion and I can handle it and I know where it's coming from. And then three is acceptance of where I'm at in my journey, my beginner's journey, the middle of the road journey, wherever you think you're at. And I can be like, yeah, I suck and it's not a big deal. Who cares, right? Like, and I don't have to fight against anybody and I don't have to have to worry about them coming at me and saying, this is a terrible video or a terrible podcast or whatever. I'm like, okay. Thanks for the feedback. Like if this isn't for you, then it's not for you. And I don't have any um, whole, I don't have any, like, I'm not stuck on it. I'm trying to think of the word exactly, but that's the same thing. So just realizing that if this is something that you want to do, if you want more confidence, if there's things in the world that you want to put yourself out there to do that require confidence, one, courage. Right. So if you're not good at processing and feeling emotions and knowing where that comes from, courage can always get us over that. So learning what courage just feels like to you, that can be very helpful. And that's actually part of self-confidence is learning about our feelings and knowing that we can experience, feel and process any emotion and that we create those emotions. So I can help you with that. I can help you with courage. Um, also, I can help you a lot with acceptance and understanding what that means and what are these it's basically the stories that we have our underlying like operating system of like, that's really kind of stops us. And so once we accept that, like the, the thing that we've been told isn't actually true. So, like I said, that being bad at something is bad. Like, I don't know if that makes us a bad human or if it has to be embarrassing because we're not good at something um, or not enjoyable because we're not good at something. Like none of that is true. We can actually not be good at something and still enjoy it. We cannot be good at something and not be a bad person. We cannot be good at something and not be humiliated or embarrassed by it because we just own it. That acceptance, we own where we're at and then nobody can use it against you. So hopefully this helps. Um, if you want to work with me, definitely reach out to me, schedule a one-to-one -one call with me. And we can definitely work on your confidence and whatever goals that you're working on or just improving your life. Any of this will definitely help. Um, and we can go more into that. But I'll give you one tip before I get off because I have to do this. If you want to learn self-confidence and how to experience, feel, process an emotion, it takes sitting down, being with yourself, and feeling those sensations in your body. You can do this through meditation. You can do this through just asking yourself, like, when's the last time I felt courageous? And what did that feel like in my body? There's all kinds of ways, okay? But, um, and not just courageous, you can do that with any emotion and just like starting to feel those emotions, right? When was the last time I felt embarrassed? What does that feel like in my body? 
know where it's coming from, know where we're creating it, and know that we can get out anytime that we want to. Um, so like I said, schedule a call with me. I'd love to work with you and help you with your goals. Like I said, we start with where you're at now, where you want to go, and then we bridge the gap on how to get there faster. And I can help you do that. And I look forward to working with you. Please schedule a call with me and I enjoy talking to you and it'll be super fun. We'll have a good time. Have a good day. I'll talk to you guys later.